welcome to our presentation, Paint the Town Green. I'm Samantha Knudsen, this is Clara Hajukovich, Janelle Scholes, and Rich Chandler. We had the opportunity this semester to work with Green Star of Interior Alaska. I'm going to tell you a little bit about them. Their mission is as follows. Green Star is a local nonprofit that encourages and enables our community to reduce waste and increase recycling. Their core purpose is to reduce local waste. They have been in Fairbanks since 1998. They are the only recycling organization in Fairbanks to recycle electronics, and since their inception, they have recycled over one million pounds. They're also very involved in special events recycling. They offer services to businesses and organizations that have events in Fairbanks, and they were also able to, in 2014, send out um, recycling recycling uh, guides to about 40,000 households in Fairbanks through the United States Postal Service. And their one full-time paid employee is also their executive director, and that is Becca Bredo. Our project outline, our original project purposes were twofold. There we go, were twofold. The first was a survey. Green Star found that these businesses and organizations that they're working with for the special events recycling were unwilling to pay for the services that Green Star wanted to offer them. So they asked that we start thinking about a survey that would ask questions about what these businesses and organizations are willing to pay for these kinds of services. And then the second part of our original project purposes was branding, and this was for a job training program that Green Star was in the process of beginning to develop. And it would collaborate with community members that perhaps were interested in part-time work or needed to work off community service hours. And then throughout the semester, this third point, we also ended up, Rich mostly, ended up doing a lot of grant research, looking up grants that Green Star would qualify for. And then the fourth thing is a video that Janelle was able to put together that sort of a call to arms for people in Fairbanks to let them know that there were volunteer, there are volunteer opportunities at Green Star. Next thing is market research. We knew that the market research that we needed to do was towards a target market that was these organizations and businesses that were having events throughout the year that Green Star could give recycling opportunities to, whether they knew it or not. And we decided the best way to research these target markets was through a survey, and we sent these out through an email to that specific audience. And this was a really good thing because it saved money for Green Star, which is important because it's a nonprofit, and there was a potential for quick responses. Now I'll reintroduce you to Connor, who will be talking about the SWOT analysis. Okay, this is our SWOT analysis of Green Star. Uh, as we've learned in this class, the SWOT analysis is an organization's internal strengths and weaknesses and external opportunities and threats. So starting with the strengths, uh, Green Star is a nonprofit organization and therefore can appeal to the emotional side of people and from a marketing standpoint, uh, that's really important. You know, they can market that. They're not out to take people's money, it's a uh, organization to help the community. Uh, Green Star has also started to develop somewhat of a base here, uh, been here a long time, and that can develop a lot of trust. Although they are still relatively unknown, having a long standing in the community is important. Uh, the organization has also been receiving increasing levels of funding from the Fairbanks North Star Borough. And uh, their biggest strength is probably their executive director, director Becca Bredo. She has modernized their branding, including changing their name from the Interior Alaska Green Star, Green Star to Green Star of Interior Alaska. She's also helped to redevelop their website, modernizing it and making it a lot easier to use. Uh, another strength of Green Stars is their online presence, uh, substantial on Facebook with uh, weekly posts uh, regularly. Next, uh, the weaknesses. Green Star only has one full-time employee, and that, of course, is hard to spread the workload out. Uh, despite being well established in Fairbanks, they are still re relatively unknown. And I think a lot of that can be due to nonprofits have a very small marketing budget, have to be creative with your marketing. 
Uh, Green Star has three open board member positions, which do need to be filled, hopefully by well-connected individuals in the community to help uh, bring the community a little closer to the organization's goals. And then lastly, recycling in Fairbanks is extremely difficult right now. There's no, there's no spot where you can bring all your recyclables. There's three different locations. None of them can recycle everything like glass, plastic, metal. So that just creates a lot of confusion in the community. And uh, hopefully in the next five years or so, that, that problem might be fixed. Uh, moving on to opportunities. Green Star did receive a grant for the borough for the uh, large aluminum signs that have just been posted for transfer sites and the landfill, and that's just a recycling guide. Uh, the company will hopefully hire a program coordinator to help oversee the current programs and develop new relationships. They've uh, got a contract with Warblows Air to backhaul electric waste from uh, outlying communities, which is really important for communities that uh, don't have the ability to recycle. Tanana Valley Watershed has helped them by giving them a trailer to the haul waste. And then finally, uh, having the VISTA around gathering various agencies to refer participants for their job skills training program. Uh, the threats, certain uh, events aren't really willing to pay that much. Uh, a lot of them it's just no money at all and just food space and laborers can get in free. So that's, that's a pretty big toll on a nonprofit's budget for sure. Green Star is in need of additional funding from corporate sponsors, as I think they all always will be as a nonprofit. Uh, a lot of clients, especially uh, Golden Wheel Amusement, that was a big client for them this year, and there's just no guarantee that they're coming back next year or will use Green Star again. So that's just that's a big threat for them. Uh, Green Star's Vista did recently leave the organization, so a replacement will be needed. And then finally, political elections are a uh, pretty major threat to Green Star just because a lot of their uh, funding does come from the North Star Borough. Um, moving on to target markets. We really touched on three target markets for this project, mostly. The first one is the big, broad, basically all Fairbanks households, which uh, has basically been uh, used with the 40,000 occupants for the uh, guide that was sent out. And then also our video is kind of geared toward all, all Fairbanks uh, households. Uh, the second one is special events and venues, which we targeted with our survey. Uh, we just wanted to find out like what's out there and basically if they're willing to pay. And then finally, uh, the job skills training program that we touched on, that would be focusing on low income and at, like, at risk youths. Some good uh, target markets for that would be something like the Rescue Mission, uh, Fairbanks Children's Museum, or the Downtown Association. Next up is Janelle for marketing. So as you know, there are the four P's that make up the marketing mix. The product that I'm going to be talking about is the special events program. Throughout the semester, we helped Greenstar with the new branding for the new program called the Special Events Recycling Job Skills Training Program. But currently, it's been put on hold for right now, so I'm going to be focusing on the special events program that is Currently. So in 2006, Green Star started working with special events, and they primarily worked with the Tanana Valley State Fair. And in 2012, they expanded and started working with events large and small in the community. It is primarily run by the volunteers for the events. They will go to the event, they'll set up the bins, they'll take them down, they'll uh, sort materials, they'll help rescue recycled materials from the trash as well. The special events are held here in Fairbanks. Uh, during the spring and summer months, those are our busiest months for special events that go on. Green Stars worked with the Midnight Sun Run, the Golden Wheels, Summer Spectacular, the Summer Solstice, and these are just a few events just to name. And they also want to expand to new venues that offer special events, such as the Big Dipper, the Carlson Center, and events like these. The price for the services are being developed right now. Uh, we came up with a survey to help Becca come up with a fair fee for service price. There are about four different options that uh, special events can choose from and each service would have a set price for them and they would be able to choose from that. Currently there's no set prices for these options. 
So in the past, special events have offered free admission to the event. They've offered free booth rental, but then when it comes to the actual service, there's little to no money that is provided for the service. So hopefully the service, or the survey that we came up with will give a clear number for each service. And the program is promoted primarily through their company website. It's really easy access. There's a big green volunteer button that you can click on and find all the information that you need. And you can also contact Becca if you have any questions on how to get to be the volunteer. So now I will hand it off to Chandler to talk about Sitter. Okay, so uh, what we're looking at here is survey demographics, and this is how we broke it down. So I'm going to give you a quick snapshot of this, and then we'll look at survey analysis. But what's happening here is the demographics broken down into two different categories between event planners and also venue owners. Okay, event planners can have an event anywhere, anytime, even under the roof. Whereas venue owners, people that own things like the Carlson Center, uh, the Big Dipper, etc., those are the difference between the two categories. And then out of those, we came up with 93 people on the list that Green Star has been researching for quite some time that broke down into the five different categories, community and charity events, education, arts entertainment, sports recreation, and cultural. So each one of these is, is basically how it broke down so we can get a really good idea of who, who we're looking at. Now again, uh, what we're looking at, this isn't to consumer, this is a B2B. This is a business-to-business -business survey, so what we're looking at is systems and processes from one business to another and not an individual, but an individual that's answering a survey that's representing an entity. So we're looking at things like event time, the volume, how much are they actually putting through there in terms of expendable, refuse, recycle, not to mention the amount of people and the money as well. And then the most important part is that disposal cost. And now real quick, we're gonna go into survey analysis with Connor. Okay, I just wanted to do a couple examples of what we used in the survey. So for a one day event, which price range was figured budget for full service special event recycling? So this one we can see, this blue region was clearly uh, the majority of our answers, and that was zero dollars basically. They were not interested in paying anything for uh, the services provided, just donating food space and free admission. And uh, one of the reasons why we were thinking this could be is just because it is a small community and a lot of small businesses just don't have the budget to pay for a recycling effort like that. Uh, next up is, if Green Star Special Event Recycling Services provided part-time temporary work to low-income and or disabled citizens, how would this influence your decision? So again, we see a pretty big majority on it just wouldn't affect their decision. And this is kind of a similar reason, I think, because there's, it's just a small, small business world and they they don't have the resources to pay for recycling. And at this point, it just, it wouldn't matter who is doing the labor. Uh, for this one, what would be your primary motivators for hiring Green Star? This one uh, was pretty mixed, but recycling is the right thing to do was a big one, and then supporting a local nonprofit organization. And you can kind of combine those two into our basically uh, marketing to the emotional side of the consumers. We're looking to be like, okay, this is the right thing to do, and it's a nonprofit. It's all about the community. So, from a marketing standpoint, definitely still marketing to the emotional side. Thanks, up, Rich. Yeah. Okay, back to it again. All right. So the implementation. So to give you all the information on the survey and how we developed it and why, based on events over time, because there's only so much time in the semester to do this. This is what we could implement immediate, and then also for the future with an ongoing process from the next marketing team. So the product ends up being the same, promotion ends up being the same, but package price, different. And why is that? Here's why. First of all, garbage, if you will, or refuse, is based on price per volume. And it's either gonna be based on cube or weight. So we had to get really creative, even though non-response was one of our concerns, but not a threat. Even though we got nine responses out of 93, that's okay because we still actually got to you achieve some data points and make some conclusions. So by that, if volume, uh, and it's per dollar, is actually carted away from each one of these either venues or events, and garbage and recycling are divided. So hypothetically say, because I had some pictures, so trust me, you're gonna want the verbal portion of this. If we hypothetically have garbage in a pile, and it costs $10,000 to ship it away, but I separate it into two other piles, and let's just hypothetically say they're 50% each, half of it is recycling and half of it is true dirty garbage, well, half of it goes away. Well, that's $5,000. 
Now, if the budget for your event planner or venue owner is only $10,000, well, guess what? It only cost you $5,000 to send that garbage away. But where does that other $5,000 go? Well, this actually allows them to consider a penetration price in the future because what you saved on pure garbage that's going away, that is now recycling, you're simply paying to the person that you said, and blue and orange is the person that deserves it. That's the way we looked at it. Now, it's basically the same cost. You only have to elevate it a little bit to compensate for that because sometimes recycling doesn't weigh as much as true garbage. Next thing for immediate implementation was a social media expansion, which works pretty well. Uh, this is a site uh, that we found uh, that basically starts with State Farm, and it's called a Good Neighbor Program, in which on their Facebook, and it bounces to Twitter, is a local volunteer program, or basically a community watch program, that you can plug in your zip code, and it will tell you what volunteer activities are going on in your town. Uh, now, they also bounce to allforgood.com, which it also collaborates with State Farm, and then they both go to Twitter. So we just pretty much kind of tripled their social media space just by displaying one event calendar 30 days at a time. All right, the next thing, uh, Grant Watch, and actually these take a, a lot of work, uh, but this one is the quickest and the, basically the easiest one to access because this is, I can find this through Alaska Grants. Uh, there's a lot of them out there, uh, but you have to read the fine print, and generally most of the time you have to be a member of the organization or that website to get all of the information. So I spent some money to get some of this, and some of, it, some of the money I just let it go. But again, this one right now, this is for Amedia, and this is for 2016, $10,000 for profit for a nonprofit organization that promotes basically environmental health and stewardship of the environment. Absolutely perfect for them. Now we just have to find uh, Grant Ryder. So, uh, implementation, the next one. Uh, so here's some other things, uh, and again, uh, the brand and the commercial, you're going to have to wait for that. Uh, the sponsorship and contributors, here's another, here's another portion that we looked at. Sponsorship and contributors made up 15% total of 2014 income for Green Star. However, that's a very low number when you look at other organizations like Fairbanks Symphony or the Arts Council. Those people love to donate money to keep these things alive. They just don't know they want to keep us alive because we haven't told them yet. But once we get out there and we can actually reach them, that's the whole point. It's going to make you feel good about, about what they're doing. Uh, and then unrealized venues. There's a couple other things out there as well. There's a few events that we have normally in the spring and the summer that continue to come up that simply weren't on our search list because they're occasional parties, things like Beer Fest, Food Fest, Oktoberfest, uh, all the outdoor concert series over the summer. Now, I don't know if you guys have ever been to these events. I only use one cup, but evidently everybody loses a lot more than one because there's a lot of cups when I leave. But the fact is, is that's another input or another approach into the market through the cups. Well, okay, well, what does that have to do with uh, electronics? Well, I don't know. Maybe if you bring a certain amount of electronics, well, you can get a little bit of ticket off your, uh, a little price off your ticket at the door. All right, lessons learned. Uh, this is a big one here. Uh, questionnaire, you have to take the time to develop the right questions because a survey is actually a shiny point. You can't send it out every single week. As long as you have the time to develop it, you have to take all the time you do have. The next one is measure of effectiveness. You can't measure effectiveness or performance if you don't know what your starting place is. Starting at the beginning of the semester, we have a client sheet, and we have to keep working with that, but we're the first, which brings me to the next one is task organization. In my opinion, we started from scratch. We are pioneers, and those are like the coolest people in history, as far as I know, and uh, we had to task organize as we progressed through the semester. And I'll be followed by Sandy. Real quick, I'm going to tell you about the second part of our original project purposes was the branding we did for job training program. And we worked on a logo and a title, and we wanted the logo as a group to be simple and memorable, and we wanted it to still be recognizable as part of Green Star. And then the title, we knew that nobody was going to remember special events, recycling, job training, skills, program, <laughs> much less surge TISP as an acronym. So we came up with the title Rising Star Program. And I, after approving from, from the group, we decided on a simple uh, style that I drew up and designed that on Adobe Photoshop. And for the first time, you will be seeing the Rising Star Program's new logo, which is, ta-da! <laughs> <laughs> Video. And that's our presentation. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Let's toss some questions.
questions out there? Did you guys look into maybe um, getting with the hotels to recycle for their special events? Because, I mean, my company just had a Christmas party at Alpine Lodge, and just think of all the beer bottles, alcohol bottles, like, and all we did was throw them in the trash can. So, you know, hotels would be a good thing. Yeah. I, we thought about that. We actually discussed it early on in the semester. The only thing is, is a, is a routine bar night for like a, a even a hotel, unless it's a huge event that draws hundreds to thousands, uh, the juice isn't really worth the squeeze, especially when it comes to recycling, because it, it costs effort to make the effort. Well, I know corporations like our company would have paid for it because the lady who plans it is very like green. Oh, absolutely. Can, make sure can it be done? Like absolutely. We would just have to change the package and the price to, to accommodate a hotel or a block or something like that. We were, we were working pretty strictly with the list that we were given, but I mean, they, they're always making new lists and trying to find new places. So. Do you guys want to show the video? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
on that note, you did point out the cost difference. What's the value in dollars, in volume? <coughs> you made it into the language that has to be expressed to people that are bearing that cost. The event planners have to figure out, okay, what's the cost to cart away all those red solo cups after the Toby Keith concert? <laughs> that was good. So you got it. wasn't really a question, I guess. More, <laughs> of, a, more of that, like, I do want to know who's that 28%, because if those are the ones writing the checks, she's going to want to know. We did run that by her. She, she knows who the great, but she knows the services. <coughs> this is just kind of for my own, own information. Is there a pollution tax for, like, hazardous material in Fairbanks? Like a reason or incentive to go recycle it? Well, they, <laughs> you've, got the regular, you've got the regular stuff like core fees anytime you buy car parts. They're really going to charge you extra money on parts. You got to bring it back. I mean, there's certain things implemented in the community, but we're not California. Exactly yeah. deep. No. Okay. <laughs> I was just wondering because I know it costs money to go take batteries. Yeah. Instead of just they'll, they'll charge you ten bucks for a new one. You get that ten bucks back, yes. and you bring your old one back. Okay. But Alaska doesn't have any emissions for cars. Yeah. Okay. So uh, now we're going to. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've got a whole other write-up for the borough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to go. All right, let's back to you like to address or Andrea? Okay. Sure, I just have to give this team um, major props because, uh, like they said, our VISTA departed um, unexpectedly. And so they carried on. And um, they were helpful and professional. And um, I really like the creativity. The Rising Star program, I wouldn't have thought of that by yeah. myself. And it really captures our idea, which is trying to help people move out of poverty and better their lives. So mm -hmm. even though that program is on the back burner for the moment, that's an idea. And the logo, too, with your permission, we'd like to um, retain that for future consideration. Oh, that's Green Star property as far as I know. have to say Intellectual property, property rights? Right? That's hers. It works in the School of Management, not us. <laughs> so um, Janelle sent me that little volunteer video just uh, what, four days ago, and I boosted it on Facebook, and it's had over 2,500 views. So um, as far as feedback goes, I noticed that most people trailed off right around like the 30, 35 second mark. I don't know if that's just short attention span or, mm. or what, but, um, but there was some good impact. I think a lot of people are liking it and sharing it. So, so who made the video? Is that your voiceover? Is that you? Mm -hmm. And where did you get the content? I used iMovie, and then I took pictures from Facebook, and Becca also sent me some more mm -hmm. pictures, and I just did a picture collage for it. Yeah, you guys really combined four projects into one, mm -hmm. and so really kudos to you for that. It's not bad considering we put all this together at 4 o'clock. <laughs> 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 all right.